Hello guys, my name is Ijezia Nazir Gideon and I'm going to be giving a class on fish farming and I'm going to basically uh, focus on catfish. You know, that's, you know, there are several kinds of fish, obviously. Um, so I can't, you know, I didn't study oceanography or anything about the ocean. So, um, but what I'm, what I'm going to do is, in a nutshell, explain, you know, certain practices and, you know, hopefully, you know, the knowledge in this video is going to help us improve uh, cat, catfish, you know, farming and maybe just fish farming in general because, you know, I think the most important thing is having the knowledge and knowing how to apply it, right? Okay, so let's go straight. To, um, one key thing, right, is why is this important? This is important because it affects our economy, right? So if we have, you know, the price of one commodity high, what happens is it drives the price of everything up, up. Right, that's called inflation. So one, one, one thing that we need goes up, everything tends to go up. When one thing that we need comes down, everything tends to come down. And we, we, we see this in, say for instance, you know, you have Tesla or Nike or Apple, right? Those are big companies. Whenever they are doing well, whenever, uh, well, the economy looks good. Whenever they have a bad news or something bad, maybe some lawsuit or whatever is going on, everything goes down, everything looks bad. It's not a bad time to invest because Everyone just, you know, there's this fear, right? Because it's a need. Those, those commodities are needed, right? So um, very similar, there's three basic things that we need, right, as human beings, and that's feeding, clothing, and shelter, right? So how does this affect, you know, this affects our feeding, right? If the price of catfish goes down, then a lot of things would go down, and then life supposedly would get easier, right? So that's, this is how it affects the economy. Now, um, I'll have to switch over to, maybe I'll have to circle back down to this economic uh, uh, part of this whole class, but let me go ahead and move over to the fish itself, right? So basically, when you talk about catfish, right, what do they eat, right? Catfish are usually, catfishes are usually uh, omnivorous, right? Omnivores, right? And then you also have like, you have carnivores, right? You have carnivores and you have herbivores. Just, you know, in a nutshell, I'm going to break down some little things that we learned in biology. Maybe we have, we have forgotten, but I'm going to tie everything all together. So basically, omnivores are animals that eat, they eat, uh, they eat animals, they eat meat, so meat, and meat includes fish, right? And also they eat um, <laughs> grass. <laughs> they eat vegetables, <laughs> veggies. <laughs> you can tell that I don't love, <laughs> I don't love veggies. But um, so basically, omnivores eat meat and veggies. Carnivores eat meat. Herbivores eat vegetables, right? So now it's in, in rare occasions, you see a carnivore you know, eat uh, vegetables um, and vice versa. You see herbivores eat meat, but that's not their primary source of food, right? But basically what we're focused on today is omnivores. Omnivores eat meat. So now, omnivores, so this catfish is an omnivore, right? So basically that means they eat other little animals, other uh, dead animals, decomposing animals, um, and other sea crawlers. So basically, they also eat, um, they eat, catfish eat shrimps, shrimps, crabs, whatever that is smaller than them. They even eat themselves. So they are basically, um, what's that called? Where, <laughs> uh, they eat themselves, right? So the shrimps, crabs, um, other ocean crawlers, they also eat planktons. Planktons, I hope I spelled that right. So basically, planktons are like very tiny creatures that you see in the ocean, right? That sometimes you can't even see them with your naked eye, but they are so small, but it's a delicacy to catfishes, right? And it contains a lot of nutrients. And, you know, so catfish eats all these things. So... Okay.
Okay, so the word I was looking for was uh, cannibalism. So catfishes are also um, <laughs> sometimes cannibals, right? Cannibals, I think that's two ends, right? So, um, so now the next part we'll focus on is um, how to make its food. You know, but for us to know how to make it food, its food, we have to know the components of its food as well. So I will, you know, these things, they intertwine and I will explain them together. And sometimes I'll just circle back to some things, right? Um, so, you know, obviously everything is, most things right now is backed by the US dollar, right? Um, that's a good thing to some people, but to others, it's not. Depending on where you are in the world, depending on, you know, the level of hardship that you're experiencing, you may not really like the idea of backing your products, the US dollars, right? Because um, then, you know, you think about like how hard is it is to even get the US dollars in certain parts of the world. So hopefully this class will help you to understand how to save money and do away with the dollars if that's, if that's your goal. Okay, so basically um, what's in, what we need to understand as human beings, right? You know, as, as, as omnivores, because as human beings, we're omnivores. So it's easy to make that correlation between, you know, catfish and humans because we eat very similar things, right? We eat uh, meat and we also eat vegetables, right? So, and, you know, surprisingly, right, uh, or not to some people, right, what they eat and what we eat is very similar. What we need, what they need is very similar for, for, for life to flourish. So... Basically, um, when you set up a pond, okay, so basically, there's, let me just make some space here. So, what's in its food, right? In its food, we have carbohydrates. We have proteins. We have uh, fats, we have, I'll put these two together, vitamins and minerals. And minerals. So, um, okay, so basically, f usually if you're trying to get, if you're trying to start up a pond, right, you need cat feed, you need the fish food, right? You, this fish food is usually a lot of times made overseas either maybe in china or you know first world countries right so they make this right and then they supply to the rest of the world right and then depending on the 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 scarcity or availability of the dollar affects the price of this of this feed now i need to break this down so that way we know how to make our feed so that way we don't need to um use foreign made feed when we when we have it you know, at when we have it, right? So basically, I also I also feel to mention this, right? When I when I was saying catfish at, you know, I said catfish at shrimps, they eat, uh, you know, sea crawlers. They are cannibals. They eat other fishes, other small fishes. They also eat feces. They eat anything, you know, that potentially has life, right? Or carbs, carbohydrates. Um, so. And I say feces, you know, it sounds ugly, feces, right? So feces, feces, basically poop, right? Poop. So fishes eat poop. Now this class is not to teach you on, I'm not, this is not an agenda to say, hey, go use your poop to fish, to um, make fishes. However, you know, it's a delicacy to them. Now maybe in high quantity might be toxic, that's something I'll have to research on. However, you know, they also do eat that, right? Because a lot of times, what you ask yourself, what's in your poop, right? You, you, you look at your poop, you have carbohydrates, undigested matter. Undigested carbohydrates is found in your poop. So you have this thing undigested here. You have um, fluids, bodily fluids. Bodily fluids are also proteins, right? And then you have um, uh, nitrogen, you know. So you have nitrogen, which can fall under this category, right? 
So, and you can also, you might also have undigested fat in your poop. Right? So, um, the poop in the, 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 the fish in the ocean doesn't cook its food, right? It's, it's nasty. It's just as the decaying and the dead fish in the ocean is just as almost very comparable and similar to poop, right? But I mean, because I wouldn't eat a dead fish, but other, other catfishes would eat a dead fish, right? So if you look at, if we're trying to break down what sounds pretty and what sounds cute, then we'll, then we'll probably not eat fish or any, any animal in general because they don't eat clean like we, they don't brush their teeth, right? But yet we eat them. <laughs> okay, anyways, so basically, um, one of the things I would say is, this feces, right, it can be recycled. How do we recycle feces and poop, right? Um, there are several ways you can recycle them, but this feces and poop is a, is a delicacy for shrimps, right? So, if you say you don't want to eat, you know, uh, <laughs> your poop, you know, you can potentially process this, right, and have your shrimp eat them. And then once your shrimp eat them, if you don't want to eat those shrimp because they just ate shit, you can then have your catfishes eat that shrimp. Okay. All right. Hope that hopefully that makes sense. So that way we have we have basically. Uh, So basically we have, it's a cycle here of poop, shrimp, catfish. Okay, so it doesn't look so bad when we recycle it this way, right? And then we have this. Now, some people may not agree with it, depending on your philosophical approach, which there's no right or wrong, you know, for me, whatever makes life easier for you, okay? So, now that's that. Now, other alternatives, right? Other alternatives, right, could be, let's say, in your kitchen, right? Waste parts of that you don't need. Like, let's say you go kill a cow or beef or uh, a chicken or, you know, whatever animal that you, you, kill, you killed for Christmas or Thanksgiving or what, what have you, for a celebration or party. Um, the part that you throw away, like let's say the intestines, right? The intestines, the heart, the liver, you know. Now, I know a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people in poor countries eat this, you know, nothing is thrown away, right? But in, you know, developed countries or countries, or if you're doing so well, sometimes people don't eat the liver or the kidneys or, you know, um, the, the intestines. But we can use those intestines, we can use those, those waste parts, right? And process them and use them as catfish food. Okay. I hope, I hope it's making, it begin to make some sense here, but so now, how can we make food cheap? Let's get real serious. This is, this is business. How can we make food cheap, right? We need carbohydrates, we need protein, we need fat. Now, what is the cheapest form of carbohydrate we can find in, in Nigeria, for instance, right? It's cassava. Cassava, um, cheapest form of protein. We can get our protein from several source, sources, but a lot of times we, we want our protein, we want to, because the protein is it's a, it's what makes the food taste good. You know, you say, oh, the African food tastes better than, you know, uh, uh, American agric food, but it's because it eats lean protein, right? So protein is what it's very essential, right? Um, so basically, I'll circle back to this. We cassava is a carbohydrate, right? Carbohydrate, and it's easier to find. It's in abundance, right? Now, protein. I have to break this down real quick, right? Give you guys a quick chemistry class here because it's, you know, it's important. A lot of times we we'll learn these things, but we don't learn how they apply, right? And then it, it looks boring, but in reality, it's not boring. It's in, very interesting if, if they were explained properly. So now protein um, basically has, um, 
it's it's a structure and i'm going to use this concept basically it has nitrogen in it right this protein you're seeing here it has i think n nh2 right and it has an uh, a carboxyl group it has a carbo it has an acid group and so this is a component but i'm not going to go dive deep into it but basically it has nitrogen right protein has nitrogen and this by itself in high amounts can be toxic so but we need a little bit of everything right but in high amount it's toxic now carbohydrates if you look at the name carbohydrates carbon it's made up of carbon and hyd hydrate hydrate we hear the word hydrate so hydrate means to drink water right so basically h2o right carbohydrate easy to form because carbon is in abundance right and so the, hence why it's easy to eat rice you, you see rice cheaper than meat because it's easy to form right you don't need there's no nitrogen here there's no there's no um most proteins are found you know proteins that help us to grow fast are animal proteins right now before I, before I forget like, like so there's two kinds of protein there's animal protein and then there's plant protein so we talk about plant protein we'll mention soybeans soybeans so soybeans is really good for you however right you're not going to grow as fast as when you eat animal protein now there is a lot of people who argue and say you know this is good that's up to you that's up to debate whatever you think is better but i'm just being you know factual and realistic here when you eat soy beans you grow but you won't grow as rapidly and as aggressively as when you eat animal protein right so what we want is animal protein animal protein because that this is where you you grow aggressively right you grow aggressively this aggressive growth sometimes is what leads to cancer right animal protein but we want the aggressive growth hopefully in the presence of exercise and vitamins we won't have any cancer but this is what is very essential for growing soybeans you know and several other uh you know pea protein you know there are all those things that plant protein they are good for you but they're not uh, for animals um but they you may not grow as fast we want this catfish to grow fast and sweet right so then we want to focus on this so then how do we get this animal protein animal protein also includes insects 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 have a very proteinous right and a delicacy maggots i know this sounds nasty but when you're making money nobody cares right nobody cares how you know it's like you have to be be ready to dig your hand in shit so basically you have insects you have maggots you have um how what else you know we talked about other dead animals right dead animals now sometimes these dead animals would synthesize into would, would start to culture maggots so you see maggots coming out of the dead animals so that is the, the natural recycling process already happening right worms worms insect maggot this worms right is what chicken eats it's what fishes love how do you form worms they come out from and maggots come from you know decaying and decomposing um matter right so dead animals maggot insects what else so eggs almost forgot that eggs is very common now eggs has a lot of um uh, nutrients it's very it's very nutrient so it's it's a, a phase before life right so it still falls on the animal protein a lot of people like to a lot of people like to um remove egg and call it oh it's not it's not an animal but it leads to an animal <laughs> so i put it under this category because it has almost the, the same component you know in terms of cholesterol and um other things right vitamins that you find in eggs what you find in, in animals right so when when these things when they decompose one key thing they have in common is this nitrogen right so they have this nitrogen and 
this nitrogen is is works the same way as oxygen in the sense that when we breathe right the way our lungs is designed is designed to breathe in something that is very light so to make breathing very easy and effortless right but here's the so oxygen is very light but here's the problem nitrogen is lighter than oxygen right so when you put when you let's say you have a let's say you have a bowl like this right and you're pushing oxygen right down and you're pushing nitrogen down into this bowl right into this bowl of whatever it is you want to call it nitrogen will get in here faster and it would get in here and faster than oxygen because it is lighter right so that's what makes it dangerous and toxic because we don't notice it we don't know when you inhale nitrogen right because it is it has a lower affinity they call it lower affinity than oxygen so basically when it comes down it comes it's lighter now um that can be a good thing or bad thing like i said it always it all depends on how you your perspective how you want to uh, approach this how you want to see, take it right you want to see life right so now um i broke down carbohydrates telling you that it's basically carbon and water coming together um this is just a it's not a chemistry class right i'm bringing all the things all the everything we learn bring it all together so it all makes sense and you see why school is important then they say oh education is not it's very important believe me so the only thing i didn't i'm not going to break down here is fat because fat is Fat, the difference between fat and water, they have, they share very similar attributes. They behave very similar, similar, but, you know, their characteristics are very different, right? And basically fat is, um, is, there's what they call, it, it doesn't like to mix with water. Fat doesn't, and for you to have life, for you to have life, in fact, you know, fat has to form first, you know? And if you look at an egg, everything, you know, starts with fat inside the egg. So, but that, I'll leave that for another class. Me explaining, you know, uh, components of fat and oil and how it's essential for life. But it's very essential. You, but in water, if you're not going to see anything else in water, you see water and you see fat and they don't mix. Unless you have an emulsifier, then you can mix water and fat, right? Like soap, you can mix them. But a lot of times water and fat don't mix. So what you see is little bubbles, little separations, right? Let's say this is a body of water. You see little separations of fat, right? Fat, fat puddles. These fat puddles, a lot of times, is the very environment, stable environment that is required for life to form. But that we'll talk about in another class, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've... Spoken about carbohydrate, protein, fat. Um, how do we get this fat? We get fat through, um, in Africa, I would like to use red palm oil, palm oil, which, which we call red oil because it's the cheapest form of oil. There's no need, so we're trying to do away with the dollar, right? So there's no need to go for olive oil because it's not produced in in Africa, right, like palm oil. There's no need to, to go for several other coconut oil or other oil that are expensive, right? But we need oil. So we can go for cassava, palm oil, and any protein that we can find. Okay, now let me now decongest this board. Okay, so now let's say our carbohydrate is cassava. Hopefully, everything is all making sense, right? And then our protein, protein, we're going to leave a bracket for protein because it's depending on where you are, sources of protein can be whatever it is you want, right? Then our fat is palm oil. Palm oil. So so now, the next step is to bring them all together, right? Before I, before I proceed with, um, with this, 
carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So, before I proceed with this, right, I'm not going to leave out two key things that I spoke about earlier. Vitamins and minerals. So, down here, we have vitamins and minerals, right? So, minerals or vitamins. So, what are they? What are they? What are they? So, I like to call them a catalyst. Now, for those that don't know what catalyst is, catalysts are things that speed up a chemical reaction or speed up the whole process. You know, it's like when you put oil in your car, the, the car needs fuel to move, but it needs oil to move efficiently, right? So, very similar. Um, vitamins and, nut and, and minerals, you know, play an, play, play an important role in our bodily functions, in allowing things to move, right? So, um, I'm going to go into that uh, in another class, explaining vitamins and, uh, uh, and uh, minerals. However, for the purpose to keep things more um, uh, focused, right, so I don't go on a tangent here, um, we can get these vitamins and minerals from vegetables, right? A lot of times we get them from vegetables and things like, like calcium, right? Calcium, magnesium, magnesium, um, sodium, which is salt, right? Sodium, potassium. There are so many of them, right? So you have calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. Um, and, you know, there's many of them that come that we need in, you know, trace am a little, little amount, right? Um, very important, yeah. Okay, so how do we get them? We get them a lot of times from vegetables. So vegetables, vegetables. So even here, we also have vitamin C here. Vitamin C, all the vitamin A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, K, all the vitamins you can think of. They need them too. Just as much as we need them, they need them. Right, vitamin D, they get that from the sun, right? So vitamin K, um, they get that from vegetables. Vitamin C, they can get that from, um, they can get that from vegetables as well. Vitamin B can be gotten from, now vitamin B has, uh, you know, several classes as vitamin B, one, two, three, all the way to 12. You can get that a lot of times from protein. So a lot of protein has vitamin B, right? Vitamin A, you can get that from, from um, palm oil, from red oil, right? So this, oh, this red oil also has carotene. So there's a lot of, you know, we're trying to give this fish all the necessary things that it needs, right? This catfish that it needs to, to grow, grow fast, be healthy, right? And that wouldn't cost so much, right? So that's what we're putting together here, right? How we can how we can harvest and uh, cultivate catfishes in an economically friendly way, which is why I'm, going, I'm teaching this class. Right? For those of you that are looking, that are trying to get into this in, you know, and, and you're thinking about you know, the cost and what's needed and what's not needed. What are, why, why are they using this and why not? A lot of people use certain things, they don't even know why. Like I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of, watch a lot of videos and they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They're just doing it because everybody's doing it. And then some people will say, okay, well, if I do this extra thing, mine will be sweeter, mine will be better. But they don't really know why it's working better for them. They just do that. Oh, this is my secret. I throw in three eggs to my feed. You throw in three eggs. Yes, it's because the animals love, because, because fishes are carnivores. And they, if you're just going to feed them with soybeans, that's not enough to make to to drive their appetite. So you now throw in three eggs, right? So people will say, oh, by using flour. You're using flour and cassava. Does that, you know, so to me, but you don't really know, you're using the same carbohydrate. It's just different molecular structures, but it's the same carbohydrate that gives energy, right? So why are you using ca cassava and flour 
when flour is probably imported and even more expensive. That's up to you. Okay, so now, this carbohydrate here is a binder. Very important to know, it's a binder. It binds. If you notice, it's a binder. It swells. Any, most carbohydrates, right, it swells due to a phenomenon of um, its ability to absorb, right? Its ability to absorb, so it tends to swell. So when you eat food like oatmeal, right? Oatmeal, you put water in oatmeal, what happens? It rises. You put water in flour, what happens? It rises. You put water in rice, it rises. So due to its molecular structure, right? Due to the structure of carbohydrates, it rises. When it rises, it binds, right? So um, we want this bind, this um, carbohydrate, right, in our food, in, 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 when we're making the food for the catfish, so that way it can help us to bind the protein, the fat, and the vitamins all together when we're making the feed, right? It's also going to give us energy for the fish, right? But at the same time, it's what causes this whole, this whole um, classes of food to bind, right? So that is, it, it plays an important role there. Now, protein, right, has, in, again, you know, it's a building block, right, for muscle, muscle synthesis. And it's, it, it's going to help, you know, with um, having the fish function, uh, move, move better, its overall ability, you know, so how much protein they say, oh, it determines how sweet the fish would get. They, that truth be told. So you see some animals that are big. Some of these animals they get abroad, they are big, but has no taste, right? And you see a lot of them, you know, they don't move around. They just stay in one position and they grow, right? We call them agric, right? So they don't get enough protein. Sometimes they don't get enough exercise or, or vitamins, and that's why they're not sweet. So I left this place open because... We can put in eggs, yeah. We can put in milk. Milk has some protein, right? We can put in uh, uh, blood components, blood components, or even blood itself. We can use other animals, other animals, dead or alive, you know. I, I mean, it's all going to be dead eventually, but... We use other animals. We can use soy, soy or pea, right? I see some people with some people will use peanut butter. Why are we using peanut butter, right? Peanut butter is, and then they dry to take out the oil. The animal wants the oil. The animal loves the oil in the right amount. However, the oil is going to be gotten from palm oil. So why, you, why spend money to go, you know, um, on peanut butter when you're going to take out the oil part of it? You're using energy, you're wasting energy in taking, extracting the oil. That's a, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, right? Laws of physics. So we don't want to waste every energy that is put into this can be calculated and it's a waste of money. So there's no need to put in peanut butter here, you know. I mean, you can choose to put it in, but... You're taking out the oil and you're leaving the protein. It's going to be, it's going to be fall under animal um, plant protein. When you take out the oil, and it becomes a plant protein. But then that plant protein is not going to make it grow fast. So if you don't have any other source of protein, yeah, you can throw in peanut butter um, concentrate, right? Um, soy, pea, uh, pea protein. Um, you can choose to use that, but then again, the animal will be healthy but it might not grow fast, right? So then, when we want to mix, right, this is what ideally would mix with, cassava, any of these in here, and palm oil. And then, for us to get the right amount of vitamins that we need, we go for dark green vegetables. Dark green vegetables. Dark green. Dark green so dark green vegetables usually have vitamins and, and minerals that we need, 
right? We're not going to go buy uh, vitamins, you know, from the pharmacy store that we take in our mouth and go through. I mean, some people even do that. They go buy that and they crush it up and they mix it in their feed, you know, but then you're buying that's expensive. When you can go get dark green vegetables, right? The fish is going to get the minerals and, and vitamins it needs from here. And then it is going to excrete what it doesn't need through its feces, right? So everything is going to be done and put in the right amount. So the purpose of this class is to explain all these things that are done, right? And how they affect the fish. Not just, oh, do this, do that. Do that. We need to know exactly how and what they are doing in the, you know, for the fish, right? So, okay.